And this week, something a little bit different. I know that I say that every week, but this really is different. It is the Arbath 595 Competizione. What can I tell you about this? Well, it's 32 grand for this one, the coupe, and there is a cabrio as well for an extra $4,000. So I think it's like 32,990 or thereabouts. Comes with a 1.4, a tiny 1.4 turbo engine. Now David and I took this out for a little test earlier in the week and it really is, it's so cute. It brings a smile to your face. You do have to be careful though of the five speed manual. I keep trying to put it into sixth. Don't put it into sixth. This blue paintwork is matte and it's an option, of course sunroof i think looks pretty good and you'll notice all over it there's little scorpions in a nod to carlo Warbath, who was to fit and the italians what um carol shelby was to ford except with more style probably the boot is a fairly small affair seats go down 50 50 under the floor, there is only a tire repair kit. I mean, there's physically not enough room in there for a spare anyway, even if they did try and put one in. Inside, you'll notice you sit very, very high. There's no height adjustment for this sport seat, which I think is kind of odd. Door surfacing is a bit scratchy. There's loads of hard plastic, but look, you know, it is what it is. There's a little gauge up here for turbo, and that also tells you when the sports mode is activated. Let me just turn the ignition on. Oops, turn the volume down. Love the little Arbath symbol. So when you've got sport mode activated, which is this scorpion button here, there's scorpions all over this car, it brings up sport. So there you go, on, off, on, off. Also, you'll notice the dash, that's digital as well. That's really just one screen kind of divided up by a ring in the middle, which is a piece of physical plastic. The steering wheel controls. Oh, I know the steering wheel's upside down, but use your imagination. Audio this side and phone this side. A smallish screen, which has Apple CarPlay built in. And of course you've got to do that with a cable. Instruments, incredibly simple. This is climate control. And this is the kind of electronic limited slip diff. You can turn that on and off. Window controls, strange place for them. And this cool as hell kind of aluminium kind of golf ball size gear lever. I really like it. The seats are, excuse my sausage roll bits on the floor. The seats are really comfortable. There's more of my sausage roll. And just in case you've forgotten you're in an R bath, it's broke, uh, embroidered on the, on the back seat, on the back of the seat, I should say. And on the subject of the back, uh, I wouldn't bother. There's not a lot of space to speak of. But look, this is really a personal car. It's a city car, something very small. Come on, Carlo, off we go. Just one dial. Now, Alan, I have the seat, the back of the seat upright quite a lot. To adjust it, I have to open the door. Yeah, yeah, and um, and there's another scorpion knob to twist. Another scorpion knob. Nothing worse than twisting a scorpion now that, knob. That is a single LCD screen there, you'll notice. Yes. That is divided up with a couple of hard, there's a hard ring around the outside of the dial. So the ring around the outside of the dial is the revs and the digital in the middle is the speed. Correct. And this, as I said, once you have your Apple CarPlay plugged in as I do, that screen becomes very small, but at least you've got firm buttons, uh, fixed buttons for your volume and tuning and so forth. And look, look, look. Oh, look, I've got a button here that kills sound. I love that. Now we are driving around Callan Park, which is the old funny farm. Mental health hospital. Yeah, funny fun, that's what I said. Place you and I would feel very much at home. We're coming up now along the front section of Callan Park, the beautiful sandstone building, which of course they've tried to pull down I don't know how many times. There are some stunning buildings here, Alan. But absolutely beautiful, uh, late 1800s. They were built. It was the College of Arts for a while. 
Oh, was but it? Then they, yes, the Liberal government closed it. We're out. Nice sound. It sounds good when it's revving out. When you came in and were just idling, it was sort of a noise between a sporty engine and a model aircraft. David, you know, you're, a hard, you're a hard man. You're a hard man to please. The other thing is it feels fast. Yeah, you know, because it's little and... But the seating position I thought for the last week is very high. Yeah, well... Very high. And you can't make it lower. It's easy to drive. It is easy to drive. I mean, probably not in sport mode. Oh, even then, it wasn't sort of aggressive and jerky. Well, how do you feel now? Has that made it a little bit better? No, it's not aggressive and jerky, but David, it's only got 132 kilowatts. Yeah. There's only so aggressive you can be. One thing that I want to point out, though, is the firmness of the suspension. Hard suspension is great for cornering. And on this, it feels really, really, really firm. However, in the tight bends yesterday, uh, up near Pie in the Sky, it didn't feel like... I mean, it, it, it absolutely... It, it stuck to the road, but the suspension actually felt quite soft. Uh, that's a pretty smooth road. It is very smooth road, and uh, there was a little bit of leaning corners. So as firm as this is, it still felt quite um, quite um, soft. A little bit of torque steer. Not that easy to pull into fast traffic, especially in peak hour. So now I'm up to highway speed. And remember there's no blind spot monitor, no drive rates of any kind, no autonomous emergency braking, nothing to help you drive. And there's only five speeds, so at 77 now we've dropped way back. I'm still doing, let me get up to 80. At 80 I'm doing 2000 RPM. That's quite a lot. And I think that accounts for my high, reasonably high fuel consumption. You can certainly notice that little pleasing little burble. As a city car, if you're used to driving a manual, I think you'll be okay with this because the gear changes are so light and easy. And once you get into very fast corners, it's a very easy gearbox to manage. Which actually brings me to an interesting question. Just realized how ridiculous a larger gentleman, a larger taller gentleman must look in a Fiat 500 size car even if it isn't our bath. I've had a couple of people ask me about it, what it's like to drive. That's the other thing, there's potholes all over the place. And these low profile tires, they really do bang and clang over them. Anyway, there were people interested in my little our bath, interested in how it drives, interested in how it looks. A couple of them had a sit in it. And you know what? Everybody likes it. It puts a smile on everyone's face. And it looks much more expensive than what it actually is. Alright. You can feel that this is going around those corners very solidly. Doesn't feel at all like it's about to let go. But of course, with such taut suspension, you can feel absolutely everything. You can feel every bump in the road. And whilst that can feel rewarding in some circumstances, as I said before, I don't think you could do this on a long trip.
And that's it this week from the Arbath Fine 595 Competizione. And before you write in and tell me I'm mispronouncing it, I don't speak Italian, and that's what I've heard it pronounced as. <laughs> and it's what uh, Arbath pronounces it as as well, although some say Competizione. As always, leave a comment, hit like, and over there to subscribe, and oh, by the way, the comments are moderated.